Welcome to this rapid revision video looking at exam skills. This time we're looking at paper three and the first of the interpretations questions asking what is the difference between the interpretations. The topic for this paper will be Weimar and Nazi Germany. Firstly, a bit of a reminder as to how this, the paper is structured. This generally covers a modern depth study. An example of such a study is Weimar and Nazi Germany, 1918 to 1939. And that'll be the focus of this particular exam skills lesson. I've also got exam skills lessons on the Vietnam War and civil rights as well. This particular topic comprises Weimar Germany 1918 to 1933 and then Nazi Germany 1933 to 1939. Other topics are similarly organised. You will answer questions on sources, your knowledge and on interpretations. Therefore, there is a separate sources and interpretations sheet or booklet that's included with this exam. You'll have an hour and 20 minutes to do this, or possibly slightly longer if you're going to be doing the exams from 2025 onwards. That's for both of the sections within this paper. So let's get into it. First of all, let's dive into the question. The question is assessing your interpretation of historical interpretations, which is assessment objective four. And you should, it should take you about six minutes to do. However, in all likelihood, you'll get this question done quicker than that, giving you a bit more time on the harder and longer questions like the eight mark source utility question and the 16 marker at the end. You will need to ensure that you use the interpretations. So do not make the mistake of writing about the sources instead. They will be in the same booklet. So let's read the question. Study interpretations one and two. They give different views about the reasons why Hitler became chancellor in 1933. And that's our inquiry here, the reasons why Hitler became chancellor in 1933. I highly recommend that you answer questions A, B, C and D within paper three in the order that they're in the book. It is possible sometimes with the other papers to do the long questions first to give yourself maximum time. But here, these are actually sequenced together. So I do recommend that you do the first part, question A on the sources, then question B, C and D in that order so that you consider the difference between the interpretations, consider why they are different and then consider which one you most agree with. Do bear in mind, though, that to answer this question, you should identify the main difference between the views and use details from both interpretations, not just one. I've taken this question from the June 2022 exam and the interpretations. This goes with the source utility question that I did in the last video. Interpretation one from Hitler's 30 days to power by H. A. Turner, published in 1996. In January 1933, Hitler did not seize power. It was handed to him by the men who controlled Germany. The Nazi party had suffered huge losses in the Reichstag elections of November 1932, and it was starting to fall apart by January 1933. Hindenburg began to mistrust Chancellor von Schleicher. Meanwhile, von Papen managed to overcome the elderly President Hindenburg's doubts about Hitler and persuaded him to appoint Hitler as Chancellor. Hitler was supported by less than half of the German population when he was appointed Chancellor by President Hindenburg. OK, so when we're considering what the view of this particular interpretation is, I could highlight certain bits. So one view is that Hitler did not seize power, it was handed to him. Another view is that von Papen managed to overcome the elderly President Hindenburg's doubts. That's what made Hitler Chancellor. And finally, that Hitler was appointed Chancellor by President Hindenburg. That's just basically stating a fact. Now let's give the same treatment to Interpretation 2. This is from the book Hitler by Ian Kershaw, published in 1991. This is one of the more famous books that's been written on the subject. It was an extraordinary achievement by the Nazis to win the votes of a third of the German people between 1929 and 1932. By 1932, Hitler was in charge of a massive movement of 800,000 party members and 13 million voters were generally prepared to place their trust in him. Nazi propaganda suggested that victory was inevitable. Mass support gave Hitler a key to unlocking the door to power. No other party leader had anything like Hitler's support from the German population. Again, let's highlight sections that show the view of this particular interpretation. Firstly, that the Nazis won the votes of a third of the German people, and that explains why he became Chancellor. Also, that Nazi propaganda had a role, suggesting that victory was inevitable, and that Hitler was the most supported. It says that mass support gave Hitler a key to unlocking the door to power. That's another way of saying a key to becoming Chancellor. So how would we go about writing out our answer to this question? The exam paper will end up looking a little something like this, with some space to write. As a structure, I'm going to go for blue for the points 
and red for the example or explanation here. You don't need to write too much for this question. It's only worth four marks and you really ought not to be spending much more than six minutes on this. I can usually get them done in about three or four. Interpretation one suggests that Hitler became Chancellor because of the decisions of leaders like Hindenburg and von Papen. So I've identified the view there. Now I explain it. It says that von Papen was able to overcome the elderly Hindenburg's doubts, suggesting that von Papen was the main reason that Hitler was appointed Chancellor rather than the popularity of the Nazis. The interpretation says that by 1933 support for the Nazis was starting to fall. But remember, I need to actually say why, what the difference is here, so I need to mention the other interpretation now. Interpretation 2 is different, as it suggests that the actions and success of the Nazis explains why Hitler became Chancellor. It says mass support gave Hitler a key to unlocking the door to power. This tells us that the author thinks that the Nazis' successes in the 1932 elections and popularity with voters forced Hindenburg to appoint Hitler Chancellor. So I've given the difference. I've identified examples from both of the interpretations and explained what they say and why that's different. Four marks. In fact, in truth, I could probably get away with writing a little bit less than this. Now let's have a look at what not to do. Again, I'm going to use point and example, maybe some explanation. Interpretation one says Hindenburg and von Papen made Hitler Chancellor. It says he was appointed Chancellor by President Hindenburg. Interpretation two is different as it tells us the Nazis were popular in 1932. The Nazis won the July 1932 election with a massive 38% of the vote, winning 230 seats in the Reichstag. I'll actually get some credit for this because I've actually identified the difference between the two interpretations, but I've not explained it well. I've just given an undeveloped quote. You need to go further than that. Here, I have given the difference, but I wouldn't get any further marks on what I've already got, really. And lastly, this is another piece of irrelevant own knowledge. OK, it's about the same topic, but it's not describing or helping to explain what the difference is between these two, two interpretations. I might get more than one mark for this. It depends on the generosity of the marker, but it really, really isn't the best way of answering this. You need to be describing and explaining what the difference is between these interpretations. Let's sum up the final points then. What is the difference questions are short and they should not take you long. About six minutes is the most it should take you, but you can save any time left over for the longer questions and you probably will save some of that time. Although these questions should be easy marks, you must ensure that you refer to the interpretations and not the sources and that you explain in relation to the inquiry stated. These should be about what is the difference of, uh, between them. And in this case, it was uh, the reasons why Hitler became chancellor in 1933. Complete this question before attempting parts C and D. The one leads into the other, and this is the most logical way to do it. That concludes this rapid revision video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope it's been helpful, and if it has, please like the video and subscribe. Goodbye.